Well, this is the hot topic in our country today, and that is the authorization of uh, military action, ground forces against ISIS, and I'm so pleased that Senator Orrin Hatch could join us today. Senator, welcome. I listened to some of your comments yesterday to the Senate, and I'm very curious to get your reaction to the letter that went to the United States Congress from the President. Well, just yesterday we received word that another American hostage was killed. That's Kayla Mueller. She's a 26-year-old girl from Arizona, humanitarian worker. Now, that's the fourth American following James Foley, Stephen Sotloff, and Abdul Rahman, Rahman uh, Kasig, the fourth American that has been killed by these, these uh, barbarians. Uh, you know, those acts are just a glimpse of the savagery unleashed by this terrorist organization in a really large swath of territory in Iraq and Syria that it controls. And here we have the president coming up with this, I think, it's utterly stupid uh, proposal, uh, you know, on, on the authorized use of military force. I'll call it, I'll call it the AUMF from here on in. But my gosh, I mean, he's he, he's he's and he's binding the next president also with really stupid language. I, I don't. I, I'll never understand uh, what they're doing down there at the White House. The the part where he talks about the authorization I propose, I read this to our listeners, flexibility yeah. and uh, rescue operations, uh, coalition personnel, the use of special operations to take military action against ISIL leadership. It sounds like a bunch of surgical uh, type things that he is anticipating where there will not be large scale uh, efforts. I don't think it even rises to that dignity. He, he, he's given a he's asking for a limited authorization with strict constraints on our own use of force, uh, restrictions that the Islamic State could use to its advantage. If we're telling the Islamic State up front that we will not use ground forces, will they not tailor their strategy around that fact? Tell me. If we advertise when the authorization expires at the arbitrary date and time, won't they just hunker down and wait for that date? Why would we not only unilaterally impose limitations as to which types of tools and tactics our service members can use, but then also broadcast these limitations to the enemy. You know, keep in mind the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Martin Dempsey, <laughs> he must be going crazy. He said, quote, all options should be on the table, unquote, and I agree with that. First of all, what president in, the, in this country would not want to have all the authority he can have to act the way he should act? You know, I listed three things that, it, that any... AUMF really needs to have, and one is the authorization should clearly articulate that the executive branch is authorized to use force, uh, you know, against the Islamic State. And second, the authorization should be flexible enough to be utilized not only against the uh, the Islamic State as it appears today, but also in whatever form the organization takes going forward. And that flexibility should also include the authority to use force against organizations that are associated with are materially supporting the Islamic State. And finally, and I think most importantly, get the, the president should be asking for the authorization uh, th that would not impose any artificial and unnecessary limitations, such as those based on time, geography, and type of force that could interfere with our strategic objective of defeating the Islamic State. He hasn't really asked for any of those the way he should have. I mean, I, I don't understand it. I don't understand it. He, he should ask for all the force he can get, all the rights he can get, and he might might not want to use them, and that would be a, a decision he could make. But gee whiz, to come to the Congress and ask for a tepid thing like he's asking, uh, uh, it makes you wonder just who's running the White House. It was interesting in 